Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. And today we're joined by a wonderful guest, Michelle Carre. Hey, sad boys and girl. And girl. <laughs> the, the Michelle Carre is, is the... Me. No. Oh, you're the exact, no, 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 no. Yeah, sad girl, sad same. boys. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Carre, uh, if you were not familiar, is the most powerful person I know. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you've ever been described that way, but you were very physically strong. You were very mentally strong. You lifted us up by our necks when you walked through the yeah, door. Yeah, you, that's you, how like, I greet people. <laughs> you were kind of an X-Man in that regard. You did it <laughs> telepathically. Uh, Michelle Carre, uh, YouTube star, content creator, host extraordinaire, professional athlete can we call you that i know i was you yes. were and now i think you're what? even more professional at many different <laughs> things well, I'm professional jack of all trades there I you suppose. go there you not go. really that great at anything but. Uh, <laughs> i mean oh, great. is that what we oh great I yeah finally we, we were looking for awesome. a way to describe mm. it and what about if i'm bad at most things yeah and not really well. good at anything <laughs> at all a joker <laughs> how's it going i'm great I'm so excited. We're, we're going to fight next week. I'm gonna sorry. We just have week. to fucking say that. Yeah, That's crazy. We're, we're going to fight next not week. Not each other. The, not each other. <laughs> that would, I would be destroyed. I would poof into dust and you would never hear from me again. <laughs> you would, uh, uh, yeah, you'd fly away like Team Rocket, make a little ding in the sky. Yeah, I'm blasting off again. Uh, we Creator Clash is next week. Yeah. This is, I, I don't know about for you, but for me, this is like the last hard week of fight camp because yeah. you got to recharge a little bit and be at your mm -hmm. you know fullest, most rested uh, self for the actual fight, which is on the 15th of April. We're recording this on the 4th. How are you feeling? Oh, I have been days. training for the better part of a year because I found out at the last creator clash I was going to start. You've known for a year? More That's or less. amazing. I have I didn't start training for a few months, but Ooh, downplay it. Okay. I, I was able to, you know, from a technique standpoint. <laughs> he's cheated. I, I mean, he yeah. found out early. He said, let me just say it. I, I actually my arm is uh mechanical now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just had it all the time for all the surgery. Yeah, all the surgeries. The you Aaron punches you and your head doesn't move. Yeah. <laughs> oh my it, god, it, that like, my is face so flat scary. falls down to reveal my Terminator <laughs> steel skull. Um game grumps. <laughs> but you were not a last last minute edition, but a, you've been called up on relatively short notice. Relatively compared to everybody else, I mean, yeah, because I, I mean, year, there was uh, unfortunately I did a thing, um, was not able to compete, had an injury, and uh, you were called up to. Um, <laughs> wait, well, how do I want to phrase this? You were <laughs> the you were the only. Hero person that could crazy enough to yeah, they could potentially it. face Andrea Botez. Yeah, I mean, big props to her as well. I mean, this yeah. is crazy. I saw her. I mean, she fought with three weeks of training at chess boxing, and I saw that event. I was there, and I was super impressed with her. That was uh, one oh, of the yeah. wilder ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I, Absolutely. I've heard she's very tenacious. She can't be killed. I mean, I don't mean to scare you, but like yeah, she's, she, she's, yeah, she's yeah, she has got a lot of secrets. Uh, I'm sure in store for you. A lot of what special secrets do moves. you know? It sounds like you've been talking to her. Um, well, oh. I'm secretly training her. I'm gonna be in her corner. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be like her her coach. Actually, she's using huge gloves. Okay, <laughs> like oh. the, the yeah, size she's of the you. biggest. <laughs> she's using <laughs> 55 ounce gloves. Amazing. <laughs> so you so you heated the call very relatively recently, but I do understand that you. We're working on a boxing video. Yes. Was that before or? Yeah. So basically so on my channel, I do challenge accepted, which, you know, where basically like I choose a different sport or profession or lifestyle to assume and like try to obtain the lifestyle of. You, for you saw the Try time. Guys and you were like, these weaklings. No. I'm going to. I don't love do. the Try Guys. Gonna, we love the Try Guys too. Uh, they have to <laughs> work together to do it? How yeah, about they have try to work together. How try about Girl. Try Singular. Girl. Just one. I, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do it harder, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> you're never going to see, you're never going to see Zach. Oh yeah. Like uh, in a burning building. Hey, okay. Look, we, we love those guys. But like you said, before we started recording, Keith's a piece of shit. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> I don't don't even get me that. started on I'm Eugene. Not even, I'm not even going to joke about that. Uh, no, we're, we're joking. Uh, Zach has been on the show. Uh, we did delete it. <laughs> 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 no, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think it, that was the live streaming era. No, it, oh, it actually was okay. an episode that didn't come out because uh, it was during the live streaming era. And so it still exists on a hard drive somewhere. Oh, my God. Um, I think we're releasing a lot of those on the Patreon. Actually. We are. So, we are. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Sadboys. Come on, Patreon. Um, but I, I don't want to undersell. And I know you've got like a full pitch for this. I did listen to the Colin and Samir episode. But the amount of physical stress and strain you put yourself through on a regular basis is commendable to say the least. Well, thank you. And I want nothing to do with it. How dare you? <laughs> well, you're literally doing this next week. I mean, yeah. It's and it's, aw with, it's awful. <laughs> with intent to and then crank I feel it like, way yeah. down after the fight. Right? Yeah, but you were like, like, did you train this morning? Or when do you? Oh wait, yeah. You to, yeah. So you I didn't wake up the, early today. <laughs> yeah, I had you to, have been training for the fight. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I was gonna. Say, I don't know why I said that. Like a gotcha. I I'm, I'm sparring tonight. Um, but uh, but no, I I get the vibe that you are like having to juggle a lot of things at once a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we all are, and I mean, I mean, I feel like I have a fortunate advantage in the sense that like. I've been an athlete mm -hmm. and my channel is about me balancing running a channel and also doing this. Right. So adaptability is like pretty yeah, essential. Right? Yeah. So like some of the things that I think a lot of people probably went through when they agreed to do creator clash, like how do I, you know, wake up early and then go to work after this? Right. Who's going to be doing my tasks for me when I'm really freaking tired? Right. I already have systems for You're, that put yeah. in place, which, which is really a valuable. huge privilege. Yeah. I think that that, is something I can relate to as well. Because if I had done something like Creator Clash a couple of years ago, it would have destroyed my life and I wouldn't have gotten anything done in the meantime. But I think Jordan and I were just talking like the fact that I'm able to still like, you know, train for this. And there's a bunch of like personal stuff that's been going on. I'm like fostering a dog. We've got the podcast. I'm there, you know, still putting out uh, things on my second channel. I've taken a yeah. break from my main channel. Going to bring that back after, after Creator Clash. But overall, um, that is only possible because of building out those systems. And yeah, I mean, yeah. infrastructure is like, there's a reason companies have employees, right? True. Granted, sometimes they're too many or too little, or like it's hard to optimize for, but yeah. I think when something is as essential as consistency mm -hmm. and something you care about, and then you, there's another thing you have to care about and prioritize. Right. I assume it's maybe not to this extreme, it's probably a little bit like having a kid, no? Where all the things you were doing before have to stay but now there's this new huge obligation. Yeah, they say being a parent do. is the hardest job, but I'd actually say it's, it's being an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> I think it goes um, uh, oil drilling in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> being an influencer and punching, mm -hmm. and then like way down. Oh, mother. Mother. Class. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Pregnancy, wah, 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 baby. Wah. Whatever, shut up. Oh, I'm giving birth. Done. Come on. <laughs> Did it. Um, I stubbed my toe. So, but you were working on a boxing video. I heard you mention it in the Colin and Samir. Thing. Yeah. So basically what happened is ironically by coincidence last year, I was like, everybody's doing boxing, right? Maybe I'll do a boxing challenge. Accept it. Yeah. It can't be that hard to get into an event, right? Like right. everybody's doing these events. Right. So I can I, deliberately <laughs> injure. Identify. You're like, I'll, I can fight KSI. What's the big, I mean, like I really, I, I really underestimated the difficulty of finding like the right matchup. Right, the right, right matchup is everything, right? Because yeah. you have to find someone, same height, same weight, same like yeah. ability level. Right. And then in our case, they have to have a certain following. Right, like we're right. really trying to hit this really freaking narrow bullseye. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm just, and I didn't realize that at the time. So I started training uh, with Tony Jeffries, who's an Olympic bronze medalist. Hell yeah. He's amazing. And we did like a fight camp of sorts. But then I didn't get a fight. Right. And basically after like 10 to 12 weeks of that, you know, you get to a certain point and in fight camp, you can only do so much if you don't have an opponent, like right. hard sparring, for example, right. literally is not, does not make sense to do unless you're actually going to do a fight. Cause it's so dangerous. I was going to say, yeah, cause it's dangerous. Yeah. And so then like I imagine I, like finding an opponent that like, yeah, hard sparring is tough because like the opponents of your size, it's hard to probably find somebody at the right ability level too, because there are yeah. pros at the gym that I work at of course, who were, you know, they can't really hard spar with any of the creator clash fighters, but it's mm -hmm. more like, oh, you're enough size so this person can work with you mm -hmm. and you can like yeah. learn from that. And that's a valuable experience, but actually like going all out 
is really tough. If you're trying to lose like eight pounds by the summer, you don't need to get punched in the head at full. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like we're, we're doing this thing, this fight camp, you know, whatever you want to call it. And I mean, it's hard, hard work last spring. Um, he totally kicked my ass. Um, but then, you know, at the same time, like I'm saying, you can only go so far. And then when I eventually didn't get a fight, um, creator clash one came and went, I was like, well, this is really expensive (laughs) and really time consuming. And I was just like, you know what? I think I need a break from all of this. And then at that point, because the reason I wanted to try and find a fight in the spring, ideally of last year was because I was getting married in October and I was like, you know, if I, you know, something happens and I need surgery. Oh my goodness. I don't really want to impact that. Yeah. So, you know, by the time the end of spring came around, I was like, this is not a good idea right now, Mm -hmm. given the other commitments. So then I went on and did other projects. I ran a marathon, did a bunch of other things. Just casual stuff. Useless for boxing. (laughs) What, now I have incredible cardio? What's the fucking point? Well, we're not going to be running a marathon in there. Peace Prize, you know. No one's punching you in the head when you're running a marathon. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, great. for you. I I flew to the moon. Yeah. 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 And then, I mean, like, planning a wedding is is its own beast in and of itself. So I was pretty much just swamped it's somewhere with that. like right under in being an influencer. Right? Yeah. 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 Like the, yeah. As we say oil Basically. drilling. Yeah. yeah. Right <laughs> above labor and delivery for birth. Right. I think, right. Right. You know? It's just it's, the wedding. It's way planning. harder than Seal that. Seal Team 7. Yeah, yeah. Getting a. It's like, oh, you're booked out <laughs> for how many years? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, throughout this year, I mean, even though I'm not like training consistently, obviously right. I'm doing other things and I, I was yeah. still like. Hey, like, you know, I, I talked to Ian and Issa about Creator Clash 2 and there were a couple people's names who were floated in and out right. and then they came and went for various reasons or injuries or, or personal reasons. Yeah, there's so many things like that. So many things. Like, people do not realize that it's not just like, like, like it is so hard to find the right opponent. Yeah, and mm-hmm. anything can go wrong. <laughs> anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. as evidenced by what happened this right. year with right. the I mean, so, And just like countless... It, like I injured my back a couple months ago where I was like, is this going to become more of a thing? I like started going to physical therapy and mm-hmm. like working through that and making yeah. sure that I could continue. More time to, and effort. And yeah. Expense, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, can I even, it's not a matter of like affecting my r- normal life, yeah. but in terms of training intensely mm-hmm. and like putting my body through a lot of physical strain, I don't want to also have an injury that I'm putting myself at potential long-term risk for yeah, it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so there's a lot of challenges that even when people make it to the fight, they're, they've probably like gone through the ringer. Is it yeah. catch weight? Like how much uh, leniency is there? Uh, like two there's pounds? 10 pounds. 10 pounds for this fight, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm fighting Which is pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Like this would never happen. Oh, I yeah. think in a 10 pounds is the difference. It's, like 10 pounds is the difference. Someone. And I'm probably- That's like gonna- a pug. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if, <laughs> the other person would have to bring a dachshund yeah, if you, into the fight. Yeah. If you, if you um, are underweight, you can bring a border collie to yeah. kind of offset and you can teach him to attack. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not scheduled yet. Ian has not replied to the DM, but I'm fighting four toddlers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In They're a trench all stuck. In a yeah. trench coat. Yeah. Well, oh my God, that's why they're so tall. <laughs> it made sense. I, I was wondering how they made it to 6'3". Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm fighting a Chinese dragon <laughs> for like, a <laughs> different performance. Yeah. Yeah, but then like basically, so I had the wedding in October and then uh, anyone, I, I did not realize the amount of fatigue that whole thing brings, by the way. It's the crazy. Wild. The training or the wedding? Oh, <laughs> wedding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is wedding, a lot of like sure. emotional efforts. Yeah, yeah and, and, the, and the planning and uh, like just the whole thing is is fucking crazy. Um, but it, you know, obviously a very special life event. It, it was the best day of my life. I'm not oh, gonna lie. And we um, had that, we were going to congratulate you. But, oh, thank you, know, you. So we don't want to let that pass. Yeah. But I mean, throughout this entire year, because it was so, so much up and down and so much like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try. And then I'm going to not like, what am I investing in here? I kind of like gave up on the idea and right. literally I'm not kidding. We were about to release the video of me just doing this, like, 10 week oh. thing with Tony in December. Wow. The full thing was edited. We watched it. And I was like, nah, I have to, I have to fight somebody. Yeah. This is not. A, it doesn't right, pay off. It doesn't pay off. Right. The challenge is fighting. Somebody. Right. Like yeah. the, like there was this whole storyline of like, oh, you know, finding a fight is really hard. I'm like, no one's going to get it. Nobody's going to get this. Yeah. Um, And it was right around the time that the chess boxing event happened. Yeah. And I was so 
blown away by the reception of that whole thing. Yeah, it was it was cool. And I mean, Andrea and Dina fight of the night. Period. Yeah, I tweeted yeah. this. I was like, this was incredible. And it was the most viewed part of the entire live it was, stream. It was incredible for so many reasons. Because, <laughs> because the pre... Uh, I, I don't know how this presented on the stream. But like being there, it was just like they played these pre-fight videos. And Dina had the wildest trash talk. <laughs> like, and, and then like... And then was tweeting like... Um, I hope you have a podcast because that's the only thing you're going to be able to do after I fuck up your face. And I was like, oh my God. Wow. Um, and then yeah. I was a little <laughs> bit... She was like Sugar Sean. She yeah, was no, so cheeky. I was a little bit rooting against Dina because I was like, this... This trash talk feels mean, but <laughs> yeah. they're friends. They're friends, and everything's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. like it's the at, game. But at, it's the game, and, and but at, in the moment of like being like sort of on the floor, like watching the fight, I was like, oh, I That's want crazy. Andrea to come out and just like, and I and she's also the person I knew because I've known mm -hmm. I like met her, you know, last year or sometime, and um, and so when she came out, it was like yeah, 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 and then there was the whole arc of like the fight not going her way and everybody was like, what? Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then they, they retracted and then they reversed it, it. Yeah. And that was the whole thing. Cause we were all in like the backstage area. I talked to her after the fight and you know, she obviously was like a super good sport about it, but everybody, and I, you know, her sister on the other hand <laughs> was like, this is bullshit. And I was like, this is bullshit. Cause like her sister was right next to me I and we were like it. high fiving. That's amazing. Um, she was the, yeah, the surrogate right person. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're not saying anything out loud, but like nice and clear. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. So anyway, they're great. Um, Alexandra and uh, Andrea, Andrea Botez on. Andrea. Sorry, there's so many different ways to pronounce that name. Are you two in contact right now at all? Or it's like separation of church and state? You don't want to chat? Well, you, you know, what's it. interesting about our situation is that we created this situation. Mm. Unlike, you know, I think a lot of fighters come or, or are approached maybe by an Ian and Nisa or come to right. them and they're like, hey, I want to do this. And then they find the matchup. Yeah. And in our situation, it was a, hey, do you think we could like, see if we could like get in this thing you yeah, know what yeah, i yeah. mean um with her like coming fresh out of her fight camp right. and you know tweeting at creator kosh like i want to do this i was like well maybe i right. i mean like there are very few people who would do this on this short of notice i right. think and, and the stars really sound like they're aligning because you weren't coming from complete zero you correct. had done some training yeah absolutely which, like if you were learning to throw a punch like in, de in December, in December yeah. that's a different story. You know? Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, like, I think they're, uh, what's really hard to explain is the insane difference, miles of difference between hitting the mitts and applying that when you're getting punched in the face. Oh my, there's a million things are happening at once. It's like, those are two completely different things. It's like playing Starcraft <laughs> where there's just like <laughs> so many people, so many things happening yeah. and you can't possibly like, thank you. This is my dry clean. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh my God, it's Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <and he's, laughs> um, the first few times I sparred, I was like, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't think fast enough. Oh yeah. And then I just close mm -hmm. up into a little ball. Yeah. You know, it's and you saw that happen. It's extremely emotional. Yeah. It's, it's scary. You get hit hard and your equilibrium's gone and you have yeah. to try and recover while also uh -huh. still boxing. And, and then your coach is like, just do a one, two, one. And you're like, hi, what am yeah. I doing? Remember your training. And yeah. you're like, who are you? Yeah. Like, yeah. Everything is out the window right Which now. Which one am yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> am I Michelle? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's this really interesting situation where like, yes, I had done a, a version of boxing training right. way earlier in the year. And then she was coming fresh off this. And, you know, there's this whole thing of like, we even had this conversation where it's like, well, there's, this, there's still a height and weight difference between us, mm. you know? Are you gaining? I technically am gaining and she's coming down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're going to land right in that, that That's 10 pound thing. Yeah. And then of course I'm, I'm going to pee after and she's going to eat after. Right. So You're we'll see what happens. But yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I, I think like each of us had to like really sit with like, it's impossible to have, a perfect, a perfect situation. situation yeah. And that's something I kind of realized throughout the year because I, I was really looking for like, I need a person who is 115 and 5'2 and this and that and whatever and all these other things. And I was like, you know what? I really have to overcome 
this. Yeah. If if this is the opportunity, let's go. And yeah. I really got to hand it to Andrea because like we, you, you know, what's interesting is I feel like most people who are fighting each other, it is this like, we're, you know, separation of church and state. We're not going right. to talk and stuff. We literally got on a Zoom call and we're yeah. like, okay, what piece of content are we going to make? Let's let's yeah. get together and shoot a poster because, you know, that's, yeah, that's we awesome. wanted a fucking epic that, poster. <laughs> it, was the, it, it was very clear because I was doing, I'm doing Creative Clash as kind of not content a little bit. It's, that's it's a, better, honestly. Well, no, for me, it's it's more like this is a personal challenge that I wanted to do. I love that, yeah. And it just doesn't align with anything, but I just wanted to like shake my life up a little bit. And when I saw the stuff that you guys were doing, I was like, yes, that's good. I like that. I yeah. didn't do that. I'm glad someone did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we literally, this is not normal. We met in person to have a discussion. Right. About this whole You're thing. You're like Floyd Mayweather and like Logan Paul, <laughs> like going to a meeting and being like, all right, how are we going to make millions of dollars? No, for, for it was charity. not it's like, charity, and obviously we're, we're both intelligent people. She's a chess player. We're like, we're, there are things we're not sharing with each other. We're not telling oh, each other oh yeah, everything. Sure. Not per Obviously. imperfect information. But you know, I mean, it's like, um, yeah, we we did a full shoot day together to shoot our announcement video. Um, my team shot a lot of her stuff. Her team edited some of this. Right, right. Like, I I feel really blessed that it's interesting that I feel like we have been in a way. I'm I'm, I'm not. There's no way to say that we've been collaborators to a certain extent. We're going to punch each other in the face next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. But like all things considered, it's it's been a really positive experience for me at least. So um, yeah, not going to be on April 15th for Andrea, but whatever. Hey, let's go. <laughs> I mean, Guys, you're going to kill it. You guys just punch it to death. That's, yeah. I mean, that I've had a similarly positive experience. I think that like I, my coach will probably have him on the show at some point. Uh, oh, you maybe should. after the fight. Just because like he has an interesting background, you know, he was like a, a pro, a pro boxer, like sort of had some injuries, was trying to decide what he wanted to do, you know, with his career, found coaching. And he has like a really good network. He's like really good. He trained Michael Reeves for Creator Clash. Michael Reeves. Ooh, fast. you got that guy. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I literally, that was, that was the, the one. The Golden two, Gloves guy. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They asked me if I wanted to do it. And then they were like, here are your trainer options. And I was like, if I can get Michael Reeves coach, <laughs> yes. then I'll do it. I'll take I can't Michael wait to see. You just like swerve your head like I know. a cyclone around oh, everything. I know that throws. that is the thing. I head movement's big. And I feel yeah. like that's one of the things where it was in the APM of like, I need to remember to do this, mm -hmm. but eventually it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you can tell, especially with um chess boxing, because people did not have as much time to train. There's some stuff that takes time. Defense takes time. That's why you saw yeah. a lot of the the meta for chess boxing was just to r bum rush your opponent. And then yeah, or like the, brawl. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Where um, and a lot of people were planted. They were just like their feet were planted. They weren't moving. They yeah. they they were kind of a sitting target. It was just like, oh, I guess I'll just mm -hmm. like do this because that when you're on the mitts, that's what that's what you do. A lot of times it is. I mean, well, that's how you start. You know yes, what I mean? And it's, yes. You have to layer things in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I don't have as much, I don't. I have done combat sports because my my fists are lethal weapons. So I'm not like allowed mm -hmm. to. Yeah, no, course, yeah. you would be Makes deported. Sense, yeah. Well, it's after what I did. Oh yeah, the event, the incident, the incident. But yeah. The, uh, let's just say there's a reason Osama's not around anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> Seal Team Seven was the real one. Seal Team, <laughs> was me. Seal team One, of me. <laughs> I, it was me. Uh, but there's there's it sounds a lot like my my the closest maybe is like swimming. I was a swimmer in mm. college and there are really, really bad habits that come from default strokes. So if you do front crawl, for example, people often will go like left, right, left, right with their head to breathe on either side. And also they won't wear earplugs, which just gives people tinnitus because oh. it's like smacking your lips the whole time. But the, the habit of holding your breath is so common because people are used to just going as far as they can. And then maybe this is a marathon thing as well. You're optimizing for like how much you've just run it in life. Like, well, you know, if I, I've gone swimming casually, then I just swim. And when I'm tired, I take a moment. Yeah. Whereas if you're going to do like 20 lengths and there's someone else or you're on a time trial, they you need not just cardio, but like to manage your breathing in a way that you don't have to in real life. Right. Oh, you, I you can't like you have to what you have to exhale for extra like strength. Yeah. I contact, mean, you right? are you are kind of hitting the nail on the head because it is very common and I'm guilty of this 
especially early on to just hold your breath when you're like mm-hmm. throwing punches mm-hmm. or where, where you're inside because you just it's one of those things that you have to think about and then you're like oh suddenly i'm gasping for breath and i i need to uh oh whoops i made yeah. a mistake now i'm lightheaded well if we're like you know if we were uh neanderthals and there was a saber tooth the last thing you want is to have no inhale to for all of your oxygen to be out and then something jumps at you while you have no strength and you have to gasp in also it's like aerobic versus anaerobic exercise right mm-hmm. like, yeah. so constantly like sp- sprinting sprinting is hold on anaerobic is that the one where you don't breathe sprinting you're like not really you know like do, 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 you know and, and then like them and then like long long distance running you're like i know i know you breathe during it but do you know what i'm talking about i think it's anaerobic no like they're yeah yeah like the difference between like vo2 max heart rate versus like endurance yeah yeah breathing. yeah because like vo2 max is like your like the capacity for oxygen stuff. I don't know enough. I took a health class like 10 years ago. Yeah, I... um, but what was I going to say? It's cool stock right? Um <laughs> Anyway, we were talking about, yeah, it, it's different actually like sparring um, versus, hit, versus hitting the mitts. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I wanted to say about the finding a perfect fight and a perfect matchup is the funniest evidence of what you're describing is there are these older dudes at boxing gyms and they they've been around the block they probably train people they're probably in some sort of fight circuit somewhere the amount of times that i've been looked up and down and someone goes i got to fight for you or they're like they'll like be like, oh, they'll like my what coach the and it's like we can get him we can get him in over over That's here crazy. and i'm like it's like you have you wait yeah 6 6 1 okay yeah, yeah, we can get, and, and then my, my, my coach is like, you can't get him anywhere. He's got a fight. Leave us alone. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like you're being like sold. Oh my God. Wow. You're being market. like showered with opportunity. Yeah. Or that's one way to look about it. Uh, objectified is another way. Oh. <laughs> you know, where they're like, they're like, hmm, okay. Yeah. I can work with that. And I was oh like, what do you mean work God. with that? I don't know you. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Like it's crushed. They're touching your teeth. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm like on my, like, yeah. I have to do a lot of, um, foam roller stuff for my back, like as a pre-workout. And it's like during that moment, like a guy will just like look over at me and be like, oh yeah, we can get you in oh somewhere. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't ask. Yeah. I didn't want that. Do you have a, is boxing specifically something you would want to keep up afterwards? Cause now it's been like a priority for so long. You know, honestly, I am going to uh, drink a margarita after and then make a decision. Are you allowed to have hobbies given, th- I feel like you are juggling so many things. Do you make time for yourself? I know. You take off weekends, which I think is a yeah. very smart thing to do. Well, with the exception of now, I'm boxing. But yeah, that actually, you know, what's weird is like, so I, you know, I, I have a big training day typically on Sundays, and it feels so nice because I don't have to go to work after. Oh, like that yeah. actually feels really nice. Yeah, <laughs> you always do mornings. Uh, um, well, now we're doing like two a days, so like morning and evening, yeah. I guess. So. No, I, I shifted a lot of my boxing stuff to evenings because the morning time I need to do like a lot of brain work. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like where I can be like, I can feel sharp and be on camera and, and stuff like that. Well, and there's this false reality like from the Rocky and Creed movies of like, get up at four and do right. the thing. You can still do the same workout at 10 a.m. and it works. You right. know what I mean? Right. With more sleep and um, yeah. it's about like fitting everything in. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's been a whirlwind because, I mean, she and I talked on the phone in December and even then it was like, you know, there wasn't a spot in Creator Clash 2 and we're just kind of mm-hmm. like, uh, well, I guess we'll both like, kind of like, I was like, well, I, I'll start like going back to the boxing gym and right. kicking things up maybe a couple times a week and she did too. But so this honestly, was sort of hearing about Creator Clash 2, you were like. Well, not hearing about it necessarily, but like, so hey, is, like, yeah. maybe we could try to do this together for some event, right, whether it's Creator right. Clash or another opportunity. And so I was like, well, I guess we'll kind of start training. But, it, you know, it wasn't until the new year where it was like, OK, go time. Avengers assemble six yeah. days a week, two, two days. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember seeing you. So we met at the streamies in, in person. For the okay, I was time. really flattered when you came up to me. Oh at yeah, the, at, at the after party, I was like, "Oh my god, well, yeah, Daddy and Darvin!" <laughs> oh yeah. Like, hey, can I get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next time I saw you was we were doing like a media day for Creator Clash, and it just so ha- was it. It just so happened to be at the gym that it, you train. It out does. Of? So the 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 media day that you know everyone saw on Twitch 
occurs at the gym I was training at. And yeah. this was before we knew the fight was confirmed. Right. So I just show up for like normal training. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, everybody's no, so here. Literally, I walk in. This was before the fight was confirmed. Before the fight oh, was no. confirmed. Like this was in the limbo time when it was like Andrea and I were like, we think this this could happen, but I don't know. So we're like, and there was murmurs like sort of on the back end of like this would be the fight to replace this other fight if this other fight mm -hmm. didn't happen, you know? Because it was like, uh oh, there, it was. It kind of goes from like, uh oh, there's a problem. What is our backup plan? Yeah, and then okay, this this reality came to pass. Okay, now we need to like confirm that we're like swapping this in. But for this media day, I remember like like I parked, I walked over. The first thing I see is Michelle going <laughs> on these ropes. <laughs> and I was like, is that Michelle Curry? What is, <laughs> what's she doing here? Well, because everyone was in the media room like everyone for the media day had taken over the main part of the gym. Yeah. So my coach was like, let's just go in this corner and do this thing. So I was yeah. like, <laughs> like awkwardly doing yeah. my own shit. It was, it was so funny. Cause I just kept looking over and she was doing the most intense workout I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, we're just like trying to look pretty for the camera. Yeah. Hello there friends. We're having a grand old time over here on <laughs> patreon.com slash sad boys. We're doing a little bonus episode. It is happening right after you finish listening to this one. Jordan's here. Hi, I'm on the show too. <laughs> Go ahead and check it out. Patreon.com slash sad boys. Now back to the show. Reckon and I'm excited. Like live. Huh? You reckon you'll survive the fight? Or? Mm. Oh yeah, I'm extremely confident. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. You're the most um, alpha person I know. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, and that's like, I say it in a, compl a, a complimentary way. Like, uh, I think t like a type A personality is like a used in a derogatory way, but you seem so on. Oh, top. I definitely am. I'm a Leo. So. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like very on top of things. You're very put together. Um, and it's something that I respect about you because it is not how I am. Uh, disagree. You sent me a Google calendar invite for this. That's true. Uh, it's a huge step today. in the right direction. Yeah. Yes. Well, my thing is all of my systems are to combat the way that I naturally am. Yeah, we so are like, in spite of the way that well, we so are. So it's like being like successful in a professional too. context required me to like learn skills. And those are things I have to apply. You know, it's like yeah. we sent a, an email today to like a venue because we want to do a live show. And I just, oh, I texted. Yeah, that's exciting. I texted Jordan and I was like, uh, you know, it's like we worked in industry for how many years? And all I got was this lousy ability to write a professional email. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, literally, it's also so gratifying, especially now because I don't get to indulge in it much. But for brand deals, oh, I built yeah. my own little, I have like a formula spreadsheet yeah. that just automates all my little my little brand deal. So we have the same birthday. We're both Torian. I don't know if that Torian, correlates yeah. to that at all. Wow. Um, so you have like a spreadsheet that has like the amounts and the splits and the deadline and, and like I, when the it's due auto, to you. I have an auto indicator if it goes past the date. The okay. We need to share to spreadsheets paid. after this because uh, I also yeah. have one, but it doesn't sound as cool as yours. I do. Uh, it, mine is pointless. The amount of detail in there was only for my own. You guys benefit. are literally like tech yeah, people. Yeah, I like, know a lot about acting like Okay, I'm sorry. This is a sham. Acting disorganized when you guys have like gone to hell back and like Java and C++ and like yeah. sifted through to find the wrong period at the whatever. Yeah, exactly. Well, so that <laughs> it's just like a different vibe. I think that, what was I going to say? I don't know. It, I do, I think it's more like um, nature versus nurture a little bit mm -hmm. where it, I, to be successful, did need to like learn how to walk and talk in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And, or to be successful in certain yeah. spaces, you and know. The adaptability of your work is maybe a testament to how natural it is but, for you, maybe. Oh, like if, well, if we did a project that was like, let's just engage with this new thing for months. Yeah. I would need a little bit more spin up before I could even generate content around it. I would be far more like reticent. With but what's projects. interesting is that like, I feel like, what I, honestly, it's like an intimacy with my, athletic self which mm. i think is different from your everyday self right and that's something that takes years to develop so like right. when i go into a new episode of challenge accepted i know all right day one i'm probably going to feel this way week three i should probably like move things around because i know that's usually when i hit this point of right. mental life. like i have yeah. that intimacy with it in the same way you guys can like write a really funny video and sit down yeah. and do it like i like that is a skill and even though like the breadth of things that I have done, I, I guess is wide, the technique and like the process is one that's been refined For in the sure. same, yeah, if that definitely. makes sense. I read on your Wikipedia page that you interned at Google. 
Yeah. What year? Loser. <laughs> what, a nerd. <laughs> what year were you there? I guess that was like my, my it, it's not a job, but it was one of my first internships. 2013. Hold on. 20, 2013. I think yeah. I was there summer of 2012 as an intern. Oh my God. So we like just narrowly missed each other. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Also, and you worked at Yelp. Yeah. Mm-hmm, I did. Yeah. Okay. I definitely interviewed and totally bombed the What interview. did you interview for? Like fucking sales or oh, some dude, shit. Oh, never, never worked. Yeah, because like I was just like, I, I need to work in tech because that's like cool and there's yeah. money there. I had no did clue you what I was in doing in person. No, I, I, I did like a couple phone mm, rounds. Phone screens, yeah. And then I remember the guy, the sales guy. He asked me like, "Why do you want to do this?" And I was like, "Ah, <laughs> it's totally like want it's so it. funny because like I think Yelp has like." is become well known as one of the worst sales orgs ever. Um, Like just like the turnover is bad. The pay is bad. It's like everyone's first stop on like a career in Mm -hmm. that, in that um, arena. And something now I was in engineering at Yelp and that org, um, the people involved, I have a lot of respect for, you know, um, and had a lot of mentorship there that was like really meaningful for my career. Uh, But this is like a little bit of tech industry being mm. going to be tech industry. There was this, and I don't, I think maybe I've talked about this on the podcast before, but there was almost this two class system yeah. in, where it was like, um, engineering can eat the pizza. Yeah. But if you're in sales, buzz off loser. And yeah. I was like, this feels wrong. Right. I, like, when I was at, interning at Google, I was technically in the marketing department. Mm. And then they, we, I remember like that was a conversation had also of like, just the, uh, I guess, like the unspoken hierarchy. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel good. It, yeah. It feels like an adopted behavior from really traditional organizations, despite yeah. the fact that when you have like a tech product, communication between teams is literally the only thing that matters. There was this weird delineation when I, uh, I kind of with, because I was a very early sales employee at Patreon, and then we started a partnerships team once we'd hired enough people and I was moving out of managing them. And once we started a partnerships team, way more appreciation from the org. The, wow, the because you're bringing team, in the money. Yeah, the partnerships team, you know, it's, hey, they're, they're shooting for mm. the big fish. And the right. truth is- Oh, it's like, a partnership. You're going to, yeah, you're talking to these big creators versus sales is like you're- you're a line employee just making calls, emails, sending emails. And having phone calls. That's and then just like, like a film set, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. actors are even if if you're an actor on a TV show and you have one line, you're given a trailer. Yeah, you're given a full day rate. Yeah. Like a car potentially might pick you up from your place in LA to bring you to set. Meanwhile, a PA who's working, you know, probably a twenty hour day, running around getting coffee, getting paid two hundred dollars. It's crazy. It's, it's it's wild, and it does not need to be this way. Uh, it really doesn't. <laughs> it's like, but I mean, yeah, I, and I think it's important to to talk about that stuff. No, oh, not to mention on like on set in media production, there's literally a term above the line and below the line. Oh, that's insane. And below the line is basically all the crew. And yeah. Then above the line are the ones that get to go to the premiere. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> wow. That's fucking crazy. And it's a literal line. Like on a on a call sheet, yeah. if I'm thinking correctly, but like it's a separation. When you submit budgets like that, it's standard. You have to do it. It yeah. has to be standardized. They had a default template that they already used for budgeting, and they sent it through. And it's just a it's just a CSV that you upload straight to their internal right pr- process. And this project had kind of no below the line people basically because oh. it was just not the kind of it was you know it was a crew of like five people right and yet you still had to have like premier gold tab as oh opposed to like God. the gray tab of below yeah. the line and i just don't i it, it doesn't re- reference skill at all yeah you can have never directed something or performed in something and get treated like a god and potentially be good at it yeah. whereas i don't know like being a dp you're bad until you learn how. There is no yeah. being a DP intuitively. Yeah. Right? Wow. Well, but we're influencers and we're special. Yeah. Now we're, we're special. special. And we get to make up all the rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to show you some goofy things that we found. Hit me. Specifically because you were married recently and are now our um, wedding expert. Uh, oh, God. Jordan and I are filthy <laughs> singles <laughs> in your area. <laughs> like, um, by, you know, by choice. Cause, like, by choice. I'm, yeah. like, I'm busy. Single Pringle. Getting kissed. <laughs> yeah. 
I was doing, oh, I remember I was going to go on a date, but I was busy doing push-ups. Um, <laughs> people liking it. Um, this is titled, It has taken me 11 years to realize my wedding should be shamed. Oh, my God. So this is someone who's, like, bringing themselves forward. <laughs> they're, like, turning themselves in or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, they're, they're at the police station. <laughs> yeah. Hi, officer. The bodies <laughs> were underneath my floorboards. I worked for months on end to plan our wedding to the very last detail. Sort of. It was a medieval themed affair. Oh God. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. Oh, in no. an funny. outside wedding in the middle of August in the southern states. That's a funny way of putting it. Uh, well, that's 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 awful because it's really hot. Hot, yeah. yeah and if they're wearing the, like chain mail and yeah, stuff, the, I mean, what are we talking about? Dude, imagine the chain mail sun, uh, sunburn <laughs> where you just you just have chains. That's pretty hard, actually. Yeah. Like well, it was probably around the time that, you know, the Danes were invading the coast of the south of America <laughs> when the Tudors and Henry VIII were living there. <laughs> right. In the southern states. <laughs> the southern states. We owned 10 acres at the time. Okay. Okay. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess they're going to explain. We cleared a small area of trees, building a standalone deck and pergola. Pergola. <laughs> it's so fun to say. Um, go, go ahead. Wait, Michelle, you try. Pergola. Yeah, that wow. That, that's that's a you, perfume title. That yeah. sounded like you could Pergola. be one of those um, how to pronounce channel narrators. Oh, yeah. Pergola. Yeah, there you go. Pergola. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the pergola served as the point for the ceremony and the deck was for the reception. Sure. It was great. Because of the theme, some guests came in their Ren fair garb, of course. Others in dresses. Others in jeans slash shorts. That's so weird. <laughs> some freaks were... Who wears jeans slash shorts to any wedding? Oh, for a second, I thought you meant jean shorts. <laughs> <laughs> medieval jean shorts. Yeah, the, yeah medieval shorts. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> okay. None of this was the problem. I loved it. We served smoked turkey legs, brisket, breads, cheeses, and fruits, along with wine, mead, water, soda, and juice. Why is this right, much okay. detail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Am I We're just reading the receipt from yeah, the catering. Sure we okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I did not. I, I, I will eat my words if it comes relevant that there was brisket and yeah. cheeses. The problems began arising when guests needed to use the restroom. <laughs> As I said, I planned everything down to the smallest detail. Dot, dot, dot. Almost. Aren't they on like a 10 acre lot? <laughs> Yeah, like, it feels like maybe that's not the biggest problem that could happen, but what is about to occur? This is not where I thought this was going. No, me either. <laughs> is, is this, this <laughs> the biggest medieval feature of all? Is it's a hole? Yeah. <laughs> they, it's like the France play. and the like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's a bucket that your wife has to throw at you. <laughs> what is... Because um, it's like in Roller Coaster Tycoon where you forget to put restrooms. <laughs> yeah, and everybody's so just like, yeah. I forgot to make sure our guests had a way to relieve themselves that wasn't ducking behind a tree. What? The ceremony slash reception went well into the night. The decking was lit along with lights strung around the trail we'd created. Uh-oh, I see where this is going. But the house was about an acre's length away. <laughs> That's so oh. far. Yeah. Once, how do they get to the? Do they like have carts or whatever? Because like an acre what? is what, like fifty thousand feet or something. Was nobody like that? ever. Asked. Wait, no, hold on. Am I an idiot? How big is an acre? Uh, I mean, chunky. Forty-three thousand feet. Okay, cool. Ooh, they must have been to the plot of land during the planning phase, right? And nobody at yeah. any point had to had to piss at no. any point. Yeah. They were all holding. What about it? the people oh constructing it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they went behind a tree. Once out of the wooded area, our guests didn't really have a way to see without using a flashlight on their phones. I became one of those brides who didn't think about people needing to use the restroom or people wanting to see in the dead of night on the way back to their vehicles. Oof. That didn't one have as catastrophic I thought it was ending. gonna be like a joust broke out and yeah. someone died. Yeah. Like, I thought it was gonna was be like by the whole everyone was stumbling around in the dark, pooping all over the floor <laughs> because we didn't give them anywhere to go to the bathroom. That's like maybe what happened, but you didn't write about I it. I think maybe I just wouldn't come back. I think I would yeah. go to the house, piss, and then go home. Yeah. Imagine you finally get to the house and you have to remove your chain mail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hope you've got like a uh, 
like some, something that you can just easily a release. Flap. A flap. There <laughs> yeah. we go. A medieval style. <laughs> a medieval uh, like flap. <laughs> yeah. What clothes. did someone in the comments is going to be like, um, actually there were uh, medieval relieving mechanisms built into all chain mail. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. A special cord you pull and it all comes off. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a when you pull a thread and then like the whole thing <laughs> the unravels, collapses. all the chains like fall to the ground. It's like a snake shedding its skin. Is that a? I mean, you recently got married. Were you one of quote one of those brides that forgot to give people? A no, toilet? our bathrooms were like ten feet away, very accessible. Mm. It was like the third thing I'd think of. Yeah, partner, <laughs> rings, toilet. Uh, yeah, it's like do people? Okay, people have food. And then they, okay, so food goes to going to the bathroom. Is there bathroom? No? All right, yeah. let's do it anyway. Was yeah, that was that yeah. any moment of drama? Oh, Your yeah. Was there any people are turning up and I. My wedding. Actually, my there was. <clears throat> so we we got married in LA, in Malibu, at, at a fully outdoor venue. Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> it was not. I didn't make away from hold on, hold on. This, uh, was, uh, this one was sci-fi. What was on the menu? <laughs> the menu was actually excellent. Brisket, was it bread, really cheese, <laughs> steak, um, sea bass, mm. Thai chicken. It was. It was. A, we. You know what the thing is? Is I think that we as like video people have an edge when it comes to wedding planning mm. because for most people i think you're doing wedding planning like after nine to five on oh, the weekends and it's like yeah. oh my god i have to pick flowers and all this other shit whereas like we have the privilege of like create like producing things constantly like we know right. what it's like to bring a group of people together and have a schedule and a crew and everything whether yeah. small or big so those things like restrooms and what are the phases of the party and right. will there be water here and that like that I felt like came really naturally to me and Garrett. Well, but here's a question because you made content out of your wedding. Mm -hmm. um, did that make it because you were just talking about doing it after your nine to five and I'm like, well, you know, your nine to five could have been wedding planning in a form because it was <laughs> but it was also content producing. So yeah. I don't want to just be like, oh, I just made my job wedding planning because you're also probably sure. thinking through the content element of things. I think a lot of people have done like wedding vlogs, yeah. stuff like that. And I was like, well, everybody's done that. And I yeah. don't, I, I don't know if I'm interesting enough to make a wedding vlog. So we actually thought of what are ways we could make the wedding planning easier by creating good videos. So mm. one of them was like, one of the videos was trying to plan the whole wedding in a week. Cause we were like, right. that'd be fucking mm. awesome to plan this whole thing in one week. And then we just get to, like right. be romantic and enjoy the rest of yeah, the engagement yeah, yeah. and not worry about invitations or anything like right. that. And yeah, that we cleared a whole, we got a schedule, we got a camera crew and lined up every single meeting and bam, bam, bam. And it was honestly, I recommend it Oh, for anyone planning a wedding, clear your schedule, take a week off work and just do it in a week with a yeah, coordinator yeah, yeah. or a planner because all of the decisions were like fresh. Right. So you come right from the florals to pick the, centerpieces okay well we were just there and we picked that color so let's do this rather than like every mm. other weekend spreading it out for a year and or whatever maybe, but, maybe you get like a toilet or some shit, yeah you know? yeah, yeah just think sure. about where the toilet is <laughs> yeah, maybe you can get the trees trough. that look like to or sorry not trees that look like toilets, but the other way around. Toilets that look like trees. That would be very cute. Like you're a little pixie. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's your spotty vibe. But it's not a real tree. Yeah. Everybody gets a horse so you can get back mm -hmm. to the house as quickly as possible. Yeah. But the one piece of drama for our wedding was it fully rained on Ooh. the day. Okay. It was extremely stressful because... You know, this sounds so obvious, right? Like when you book an outdoor venue. Right. But it's LA. Yeah. It, you know, before uh, the, the Noah's yeah. Ark storm of whatever has <laughs> no, occurred no, no, this no, spring, no, no. This is a it thing. rains like three days a year. Yeah, before yeah. we're playing our penance to God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it the, was a thing. The sins of Hollywood. Or where like just LA didn't see rain. And then all of a sudden. This whole spring. It's all just been raining all the time. Yeah, which I've enjoyed. But um. <clears throat> Yeah, so it fully rained and it was one of those like we're on the phone at five in the morning on the day of the wedding deciding are we going to put like tent the entire venue, which kills Ooh, a lot vibe, of it, right? Yeah. And so we took a huge risk and we're like, okay, we're going to tent like the this the dining area and the dance floor, mm -hmm. but we're going to leave the ceremony area open. And so I'm going through the whole day thinking our guests are going to come and it's going to fully pour on them at this wedding yeah and thankfully it all 
it stopped. It was, oh, it was perfect. Wow. And and then with all the clouds, it created this really nice diffused lighting for all the pictures. Ooh. I feel extremely blessed. Good production work there. Yeah. Great, great production by the clouds. Great production by the clouds. We got it's uh we got magic hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. it was like perfectly Golden diffused hour. light all day. I did go to a wedding recently where it also rained and we all like um we all got into, uh, I believe it's called a pergola. Oh, <laughs> we, yeah. um, and with mead, and there was a there was a saxophonist like playing like sultry tunes, Ooh. and then it started raining on him, and then he's just like in. Then he went inside of the gazebo or whatever that we were all in, and we're all like super packed in this place, and there's just a guy playing saxophone, <laughs> and it was like really fun, and it was a beautiful wedding, and it I it, it the the um, rain did stop pretty shortly thereafter, so we weren't like packed too tightly yeah. for for long. I'm just, I'm just making I'm making myself laugh at the idea of it. Saxophone is having to play a saxophone full of water. <laughs> Did you see yeah. that video of the um, the woman in the elevator playing the acoustic guitar? Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, pull it up. Yeah, let's see if we can find it. And this. the train. Then she played the exact same song on the train. Wait, can we just talk about something real quick? Yeah. That this person who posted this claims they only realized that they should be shamed 11 years later. This yeah. would have been like a yeah. night of situation, I think. Did no one bring it up? Yeah. Like 11 years later, you wake up in bed and you're like, I didn't have a restroom in my wedding. Cold, cold sweat. Stuck on an elevator. Luckily, I had my guitar and decided to start a sing-along. Take you home, country roads. One more time. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that was staged? It had to be. Virginia. Is he saying pardon me, pardon me? Could you shut the fuck up? <laughs> pardon, yeah. Madam. If you, what? if you, I believe the actual law in the UK is if you do this on public transport, you get put in the guillotine and beheaded. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, and it's been a law sense. for I don't know since the 1400s. Yeah, it's been a while. We we lose thousands of people every year. Wow, <laughs> that is like. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of our equivalent of doing a podcast in an elevator that's wow. stuck. Wow. I mean, she's confident. I wouldn't be confident enough to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a, a blessing or a curse, right? Because <laughs> yeah. Because granted, you, one in every few performances is the most embarrassing and worst thing in the world, but she's not bothered by it. And it is giving her a 10,000 hours of live performance and some notoriety, I guess, yeah. is a step in the right direction. Oh. I, I think this is her beat now because she's got yeah, it on a plane. she's on a bus. She's on a bus. It. She's on a plane. Oh, my God. Oh, I saw the plane one. Dude, she knows what she's doing. She, she knows what she's knows doing. She knows what she's doing. But that feels rude to me. I'll be honest. That's a point. I'll say it. Extremely. Yeah, because extremely guess what? These people who are on the plane don't want to do. It's have a concert right now. Yeah. They. Yeah. If I was in the emergency seat, I would pull the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would throw myself off the I plane. I would willfully fly into the engine. Challenge accepted. I'm learning to operate a parachute in the sky. <laughs> yeah. Take me home, Mountain Mama. Yeah. Just yeah, jump she out. Definitely. This is. She knows that she's ridiculous. Yeah. The saxophonist was very good, though, and we all enjoyed <laughs> it, even though we were very tightly packed. Yeah. And apparently, how they found the saxophonist was on the street, like if they were a street performer. And oh, it was wow. like, do you do book? Like, you're so good. Do you do bookings? And he was like, yeah. And then they just found him from that. That's I was like, it was awesome. very sweet. It was cool. Dude, oh Mark, my God. Yeah. It was Market my street. childhood friends. Uh, one of my childhood friends weddings. Wow. Uh, Market street on, uh, on market, San Francisco? right by Westfield and San Francisco. Market street on market. Yeah. Market yeah, yeah. on market. <laughs> there are so many sick performers that are oh, yeah. playing oh, wow. seemingly 24 seven with like that, like blue man group improvised drums. And there's, I wish I had a reason to do something with them. You know, like I would see them perform and I'd be like, do you want to just I play in my my loft apartment with yeah. no square footage? Do you want to just live in there and wake me up every single morning with a rendition of the songs from Whiplash? Um, I do have to point out that Jerry Springer responded to this and said illegal. <laughs> 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 Which is very funny. Well, he's a judge now. He knows. Yeah, he's a judge now. Um <laughs> Michelle, yeah, Judge Jerry, it's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> so I want to take a hard a hard turn here, and I want to ask you, Michelle Kari, what scares you? Because you seem fearless, right? 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. I've been training, but lethal weapons. Yeah. But are you but are you prepared for the ninjas to attack? People like flip into the windows. Oh yeah. my god. Is, yeah, yeah, is there now anything? Now we're really that, getting the sad boys. But. Yeah, this is where we <laughs> we'd like to take a really hard turn into the sad, <laughs> sad topics. Yeah, it gets darker. Oh my gosh. Wow. Hmm. Uh I don't like heights. Ooh. Is is a very like normal, like that's a normal, it's normal. answer. It's normal. But it like life philosophy answer. I feel like I've gone through different phases <clears throat> of fears that have been like, you know. I'm scared I'm not going to get a meaningful job or mm-hmm, I'm scared, mm-hmm. you know, I'm quitting my job. My channel's going to fail, that kind of stuff. Yes. But I think there. at this point, I think I'm like the thing that is always my my biggest concern is like joy and happiness Ooh. in losing that, honestly. Yeah. And I think that's why at this point I'm so brutal about what episodes I decide to do mm-hmm. for the channel at least. Because in the pandemic, I really struggled because I saw so many people like, hard pivot into streaming or like, oh, my videos have always been just me talking to camera and like you're able to create even more content and really grow. And obviously that's a very niche group of people who thrived in that horrible situation. But for me, like all of my videos rely on community, um, meeting other people. And when I lost that, it was incredibly tough. Yeah. And so I think that gave me a lot of perspective on my priorities. And so, I mean, for me, that like mental health component and and losing that is is a huge fear of mine. Do you feel like you've got a good like support system now? Oh, absolutely. And I was fortunate to have that even in that mm-hmm. that pandemic. Um, did getting married feel like a did it provide a little bit of stability, even like subconsciously? Like here is this static thing that if I fall, there's a safety net in a way that they might. Oh not Oh my be. god! I mean, without question, Garrett my amazing husband and partner is like everything. I mean, he is, he is so calm and like logical and Mm. supportive and kind. I mean, I literally cannot do any, any of this. I could not do this fight next week without him at my side. The marriage component. It's, it's interesting. You asked that, like when we got engaged, it wasn't like a, Oh, now this is checked off. It was like a, yay. Yay. We get to do more of the same and forever now. Bonus treat. Extra. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel really fortunate that like I, I I felt I already really felt that support from him already. But part of it is like losing losing happiness or that mental health component of things. Right. And then also just like doing something and then feeling like I didn't give it 104 percent. Ooh. Like being like, God damn it. I could have done more. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. In the case of your content or everything? Everything. Yeah. Mm. Everything like, you know, I could have in in the event of achieving like happiness and the best outcome not not like money or anything like that but like um just feeling like i think it's the fear of feeling like i gave up on myself too early in any situation that's really it okay not like i should try harder but like right right because i gave gave up on myself before other people gave up on me Mm, okay yeah that's that's really interesting because i think initially i was going to say well you could you know not to uh, give you a hard time, but I'm like, you, you could afford to be kinder to yourself because even doing 96%, 80%, 50% oh, yeah. is Absolutely. more than zero. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the attempt, I think, is something that it takes energy to get to that point. Yeah. And like, obviously you want to give yourself credit for that. But I totally hear you in that, like, especially when you have people in your corner. Literally. Who... <laughs> next week it's me <laughs> uh tell, <laughs> get her use the secret um so especially when you have people in your corner who are are supporting you and, and really like have a lot of faith in you obviously you don't want to let them down but then you of course know that those people want you can never possibly let them down because the people who have really decided to, unless you uh are like you know breaking into my house and like eating the pizza out of my fridge you're never gonna like let me down you know what i mean because the people around you they it's deeper than that obviously but it's one of those things where like you know it logically but then the actual feeling is Mm -hmm. different because i don't want to let my coach down you know i don't want to let you know 
I, I've felt like, oh, please don't come to the fight because what if I let you down? You know what I yeah. mean? Um, like, because people are like, I'm going to move mountains to make sure I can be there. And I was like, don't, oh, God. <laughs> it's mm. like, I don't want the additional pressure of that. Yeah. Despite the fact that, it, I mean, anyone, especially the people that you're close to in your life, have way lower expectations of what being let down would even mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You can, anything can happen. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going there based on any of the expectations you have for yourself. Mm -hmm. Just there to witness and be involved. It's all good. I have a lot of money riding on the fight, but that's you. <laughs> yeah, you did say win. you. Yeah, you bet the the house and the co the yeah. the car that's at to, the bottom of the Grand Canyon. But I have to get them first. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've bet mm. them kind of rough. I bet your house. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, yeah. And Jacob's car. <laughs> oh man. Um, I did that thing in like uh, poker and movies where I put the keys down when I've run out of chips. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh and, and it was God. Jacob's keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob was there. <laughs> Bad news, Jacob. I bet your keys on this Sorry. poker hand. And I don't know how to play poker. <laughs> I don't even know if I won or what. I was like, can you drive me home? <laughs> it's gone. Can we hotwire your car? I think that's probably a very common t genre of fear, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there can be different contributors, I'm sure, and in the case of content that presents a lot of very unique specific things but um that's almost like the foundational fear it's yeah. it's the things i have it's, it's a fear of regret in a way yeah 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 i was gonna say do i i've talked about my fears before fear of loss that's me losing losing things because i i've experienced like a lot of loss in my life and so i'm like oh anything can go at any moment rut row um mm -hmm. jordan how about you um, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, my last couple of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all of my greatest fears happened in the span of like three years. Yeah, and so on one side, it's the fear that it'll happen again, but I also have a lot less to lose now in in the least morbid way possible. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I you know, and it really isn't a like I'm fearless, I'm whatever, but there is a like, yeah. proportionally, I have so much to appreciate now that I didn't in mm. the really low point that it's easy to distract myself. Right. But I'm I am noticing that start to decrease. Like now that work and and uh, career and social confidence of all back and you know. My, Do you feel stronger having gone through those things? Yeah, though sometimes just number, mm. which is not a, 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 the best thing. Um, I occasionally get a little concerned about. I went I went through a breakup a few months ago, and people kept asking me like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, yeah." Sorry, it's like nothing. It's like getting a parking ticket. I did just there's just like a wow. I'm, yeah, I'm. I struggle to, and I used to be a very emotional person with with any kind of like interaction. But short of the other person being like distressed or upset, I don't. I don't know. I I, I get very distracted by the little things I'm enjoying right now. Number one fear is losing my visa again. I mean, that yeah. was like the second worst thing ever. Yeah. And so I just don't have any. Uh, you know, anytime something's going smooth, anytime I think about doing my taxes, I go, what if I fuck them out and I get deported? Yeah. Or like anytime I'm like, hey, wow, well, I'm back at the gym or I'm having a good time or the podcast's going great. I'm like, yeah, but what if I get deported? It's yeah. always wow. the yeah, same it's thing. scary. But I will say, went back to the UK last week, all the fears came back. It was really weird. Yeah. It was like being, I was like, oh, I just left all these. Mm. I didn't pack these. I left them in my old apartment. Right. Well, that's, I mean, it's like, smelling a familiar smell or hearing a familiar <laughs> yeah. song or something where you like can place yourself back this is like, like most intense version of that where it's like if i put a vr headset on you and created a 3d <laughs> yeah. model of your like you the know immigration <laughs> yeah yeah then it would like probably trigger those same like feelings because of the like um what is it called is a type of memory oh it's like sense memory, episodic right? Episodic memory? I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. That sounds Dude. fancy. Vibes? So, gosh, I just, I never know the name of things. Episodic memory sounds like a name of a band. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> Episodic recall. <laughs> we we play covers of uh, like American football songs. Midwest emo. Oh, um, uh, yeah. A type of long-term memory that involves conscious recollection of previous experiences together with their context in terms of a time, place, associated emotions, etc. Oh. Yes. That's a five on AP psychology. Let's freaking go. <laughs> That's a really yeah. deep. I mean, it kind of sounds like all of the fears are like the same genre, right? Yeah. I think some people have, they wouldn't even know how to describe them, but more um, 
tangible fears, I guess. Less mm. a fear of a sensation. Like snakes. It. Yeah. I, I mean, wish my fear was snakes, man. Yeah. That you, would be so just, simple. No, I, okay, hold on. Now there's going to be somebody who's like, well, I have a debilitating fear of snakes. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, now, now what I mean, now what I mean. Uh, grass is always greener. Yeah. That's all I, That's all I'm saying. Oh, direct, sorry, uh, direct um, uh, kudos and thumbs up to the person that commented recently when I was wearing a t-shirt and my spider tattoo was visible. They said, just want to say it was the top voted comment on an episode. I just want to say, pretty proud of myself. I am no longer scared of the tattoo. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Oh, that's, like, so that's, sweet. Cool. that's actually sweet very community. that's very wholesome. Yeah. I don't know if it was like an exposure thing, I, I don't know like how that happened. Yeah, I didn't provide any. You've help. you've been slowly providing exposure therapy through uh, wearing more and more revealing clothing. Mm. I, well, I just want to say to those people that um, there's one behind you right now. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Have you seen... So we were talking before the show about fucked up reality television. And <laughs> in one of the things, one of the genres... So some of these genres of fucked up reality television are like um, tr pranking people, essentially. Think, <laughs> giving, like creating a, a form of psychological torture where they think <laughs> yeah. that their reality is one thing and then it's not. Like I Want to Marry Harry, the show where they just found a red-haired British guy and told a bunch of women in a house that he was Harry Prince of Wales and then... Uh, they hired an on-site psychologist or psych yeah psychologist to tell them because they didn't believe it. They were like, "No, you should respect him. He's Prince Harry. Come on, what are you talking about?" So like that was a thing on TV. But I want to talk about freaking Jerry Springer and that type of show, like Doctor Phil. I don't know who did this specifically, but there was an episode or multiple where it'd be like, "I have a horrifying fear of spiders," and then they'd be like interviewing them. Oh, wait, you know. Spiders, okay, interesting, interesting. Well, bring out the spiders. And then they just bring out a bunch of fucking tarantulas. And then the person that's freaks so out. Up. And then everyone goes, ha, 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 well, ha. And it's not, ha, ha, ha. That's Dr. Phil shit because he's not a doctor. Yeah. yeah. So he just goes like, I cannot Where believe he has gotten away. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. If, if The fact that, if you like, if instead of becoming a judge, for Jerry Springer's follow-up show, because he was a lawyer prior, so there's some, and a mayor, there's like some yeah, there. and Instead, he became a surgeon. Yeah. It's just like so you're and Dr. Phil, is Judge Judy really a judge? I don't no, think she is. I she's not really a judge. Just judge Dr. Mental. Phil has a PhD in psychology. But, but isn't it like an online course? No, 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 no. He's he's got a PhD, but the thing is he um hasn't been accredited or practicing for a really long time. Um so this that, is a, a bad bloke. But then, I guess yeah. Is, yeah so yeah, there's but you I don't think you need to just be a TV doctor. You can kind of just be like, hey, welcome back to Dr. Jarvis today. Um <laughs> let's talk about the spiders that live in our juice. And it's like <laughs> it's like, wait, why? How did now I'm afraid now I've created a new fear unlocked or whatever. Oh let's talk God. about the snake that's going to get you mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so I tweeted about this when Steve Harvey first uh got his judge show. Is it so Judge I, Steve? It's called Judge Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Oh, I will. And, and I have, tw I tweeted the intro sequence of it. So I think I can find it. I think I said, Steve Harvey is a judge now Jarvis Twitter. <laughs> he is now Jarvis Twitter. Steve Jarvis is a judge now. This I hate is this. amazing. Oh, those epic. So this is the intro to Judge Steve Harvey. This is, I just love this so much. Hey, it's a big world out there and it's filled with people that just don't see eye to eye. See, that's why I come here. <laughs> So oh my God, his degree, collar. And I'm way too the Nick fly Fury to wear a robe. But this is where common sense presides. In my house. Court is now in session. He is a <laughs> full-on Count Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was shot, especially the part where he turns. That was shot like an Amex commercial. Yeah, my favorite Gosh. is where he says, Now I ain't got a law degree, and I'm way too fly to wear a robe. <laughs> <laughs> so I ain't got a law degree. And I'm way too fly to wear a robe. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's smiling with his luminescent teeth. His also, teeth look great. They're insane. Also, they're when so I cool. recorded this, when I recorded this, um, I was on Zoom with Anastasia. We were doing a gold video on this show. And you can hear Anastasia laugh right here. So I ain't got a law degree. <laughs> 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 and I, I was like, I'm not going to re-record this. I'm just going to post it. Oh, man. Do you have any trashy TV you've indulged in in the past? Trashy TV? Yeah, some classic reality television, which may be not ethical. Listen, I don't think this is trashy, but I love Survivor. Oh, oh Survivor's, Survivor's not trashy. Really oh, good. you found the place. Survivor's yeah, it's refined. It's not trashy. Jeff Probst is my hosting idol. Like, I, I, if I could 
you know, career heroes. Jeff Probst is a career hero. Career heroes, yeah. Career um, <laughs> so, no, Jeff Probst, I was a late comer to Survivor. Mm -hmm. And I actually happened to watch the season that John Morrison is on, was on, um, for, who's He's in Creator Clash. He was in Survivor. He was in a Survivor season, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. So I he came to he came to the gym to spar, um, and I sparred him, and I was like, "Why do you look so familiar?" Um, His coach is Jeff so Probst. Funny. But but the thing I will say about Survivor is, or about Jeff Probst specifically, is I've never seen someone better. Wait, I've seen the season. Yeah. I did not put this together. Yeah, the David I versus only know Goliath them from first season. Name. Oh yeah. my god. Because this is who Harley is. Uh, yes, fighting? Harley's fighting it. Sabrina, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen. Oh my god! Yeah, it's it's wild. I wow. love. Oh man, I, I hope there's a world where somebody writes a bio about me and it includes a strong and likable player. Oh no! Oh, there yeah, I've go. seen this whole season. This is crazy. Yeah, this I is just this didn't season is on Netflix. together. Because people look so different on the show than they do in real in life. In real life, yeah. Because they're starved. No one's wearing makeup and right. Like, Brushing their teeth. Well, the so. really miserable <gasps> version of Survivor that I think, it, you know, trashy, I guess, is one way of describing it, but more just like um, more cynical, a little less sincere, a little less. Uh, it doesn't have the fun reverence that Survivor does. I, I didn't. I'm also very, very late coming to the show. In the three seasons I've watched, there's so much excitement about the project, and everyone knows it. It's not this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like going there's in. Meta. Yeah, it's like, like, um, like oh, we're actually gonna when when the when the merge happens, we're gonna have yeah. to be sure to. And I'm yeah. like, oh shit, okay, like, <laughs> like oh, I, it's like you're speaking a different yeah. language. And then they do the David and Goliath one. They're like, oh, I'm such a huge fan. I've seen you. There's something nice about that. But naked and afraid. Mm. What a miserable show that is. Oh yeah, it's the exact same bullshit. Yes. Except they they also never make shoes for some reason. Like they craft all kinds of stuff, and they never. <laughs> Three contestants. We were we were burning through it because we'd finished Flavor of Love and we our hearts were empty. With Tila Tequila. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. No. You're thinking of oh, a shot at oh, love. Oh, shot at love. Mm. With Tila Tequila. Sorry. Uh, different trash reality television. <laughs> we were watching that and we felt sad because we'd finished it. And then three separate contestants go off the show because. They get bitten by a giant creature on the foot. They step on a bush and like sever a toe. And it's just like, okay, before we even get food, I don't know. Let's wrap a leaf on it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a survivalist, but let's just put a leaf on it. I can't believe some. people elect to do that show. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny that you're saying that. Oh. <laughs> right. You, you like, uh, your whole channel is, I can't believe people elect to do <laughs> whatever the hell things. this is. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed um, to the, the TV show that has thousands of seasons and loads of people have done it. Oh, but I don't know if I had an incomplete thought, but Jeff, oh yeah, Jeff Probst seems like he enjoys his job so mm. much. Oh God, and I feel yeah. like he's reached like a perfect balance between like what one can want in life and then like what, like whenever he's like on the island, like on a boat, you see him like on a boat arriving at the island. I was like, this man is living his own dream yeah. and he's on season 45. Yeah, it's amazing. It's cool. Where would you put uh, the Lachey's in your ranking? Lachey? Oh, yeah, like Nick and Vanessa oh, Lachey. Oh, oh, like, like the Love is Blind. Love is Blind. Situation. I, okay, here's my thing with Love is Blind. Mm -hmm. I watched season one and I yeah. hated it. Right. And the then they kept going. The reunion stuff was a little gratuitous in my opinion. True, true. And a little like we're, we're just trying to, Netflix was trying to get more content and money and the mm -hmm. contestants were like i'm trying to hard launch my influencer career right so As it they felt often like they were what i think was interesting about the first season was that they were real people and then when they did the reunion they were like i'm pr trained reality yes. star right. and i'm every moment i can like i'm wearing my own merch and stuff like right. that and i get it i get the game we yeah, all course, do it of course but I think the the charm of the first season was the novelty. And I feel yes. like the one since, um, in, in the same way Survivor season one, they talk about how the hell do we build a shelter and what where do we get food Right, there's from? like a meta now. It's like, yeah. I, I read the Wikia. I, I read exactly. the whole, I read the, uh, yeah. the I, I memorized all the puzzle types. I know some, uh, some of the people who have won Survivor and some of them, uh, like they coach people who mm. are applying mm. to be on the show or... And that's amazing. Like, I want every... like. That's cool. I, if I were going on Survivor, you bet your ass I would be in a survival month Challenge camp. accepted. Exactly. And make content about it. But, I'd bring six <laughs> pairs of shoes. Yes. I'd be equipped for every adventure. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, you know, 
some of the charm of first seasons of things is that there is no meta. Right. And people are actually trying to figure it out. Whereas so yeah. much of Survivor now is like, I've seen every season and I know that if I say this at the right time mm-hmm. and do this at the right time. But again, how do you avoid that? Like that's part of this. It's a part of it, but I get yeah. why the first version of it is more charming or more interesting. Mm-hmm. It's like the budget in a movie franchise going up with each movie and maybe they get a little yeah. too long, mm-hmm. a little too elaborate, yeah. but Hey, the parts you like are still there. Yeah. You just have to scratch on the surface. Yeah. I, oh I did a gold video that is probably coming out this week that I watched season four of love is mine episode one and I just reacted to it, but I tried to predict everything that was going to happen. <laughs> um, so I'm curious to see how that, like, how that Leave a comment tur- below turns if you ate shit. Yeah. If you took a huge um, L. <laughs> but I also miss when Nick Lachey introduced himself in the first season. He said, I'm, it, I'm Nick Lachey, obviously, or something like that. Because <laughs> Vanessa introduced, introduced herself first, so it made sense. Um, but it's just like such a funny thing and he hasn't done it since. I wonder if I can find it. I think I talked about it in my video, but what is so interesting about love is blind is that Nick and Vanessa Lachey, I, you know, they're, uh, I, I think it's interesting that they're on there as a couple because they, I don't believe met in a blind date. Situation. No, it's this almost is, like yeah. they're like the pinnacle of that, which is great. Uh, you know, maybe they have a great relationship, but also like, have you guys noticed that? The show doesn't need a host at all. Like they're just kind of they just show up every now and then. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, Uh, yes. You so the point you just made is something that I talked about in my video because they do kind of make it seem like they're the poster childs for like love being blind. And I was like, you guys are both we're both huge. Like like Vanessa was on MTV for like my entire childhood, and then Nick. Lachey was of 98 degrees fame and also mm-hmm. like newlyweds with Nick and Jessica. Like he's just been on TV for so long. Um, also, when I typed I'm Nick Lachey, it auto completed to I'm Nick, Nick Lachey, obviously. But this is all just him on the reunion doing it. <laughs> One thing I admire about both Love is Blind and Married at First Sight to some extent is that these shows are multiple seasons deep. And yet for the sake of the narrative, they still have to keep going. I guess we're going to find out if love's blind yeah. <laughs> every time. You're like, bitch, every it isn't. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> and we knew t- before the show. <laughs> what love is, is exactly what we knew it was, partially physical attractiveness and partially emotional yeah. connection. Oh because what God. happens is people seemingly fall in love. They come out and they instantly either are or are not attracted to each yep. other. And the ones that are stay together. It's the, they have this whole like anti-dating app propaganda at the beginning of every season where they go, honestly, I'm just tired of swiping on people and judging them for how they look. And so that's why I'm going to, and then they, and then, then cut to the reveal where they're like, Oh, no. <laughs> whoopsie. <laughs> uh, turns out I'm not attracted to this person. Especially married at first sight. They're kind of trad. Yeah. Like the way they frame stuff is like, oh yeah, gosh. these new, this new world without traditional values where you fall in love and you follow the way of Jesus Christ. You cannot truly find love. It is like, so, uh, the this is the right way to find a right. relationship. What you've been doing, dating around with multiple people. That yeah. is that is funny to be like, well, this is my last hope. Someone on the new season yeah. of Love is Blind was like, I've been married twice and oh, I just hope this works out. And I'm like, dear God, if you get married on this show, <laughs> I, my first thought, I don't know how this is going to end. This, as of recording this, it hasn't ended yet. I'm like, this person seems like they're going to walk away at the altar because they're going to be like, look, I've been through this two times already. And I just can't commit. Like I'm, that's yeah. that's what I'm. That was my yeah. prediction in my in my video. But uh, but if they do get married, now you're just silly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like like don't Aww. just just date outside of the show. There's not legal binding where they're like you're not allowed to get married ever unless you do it on the season finale. Yeah, it's not wow. 90 Day Fiance. You yeah. can stay in the country. You're allowed to. Get, you're in like Chicago or whatever, Seattle, wherever they film the seasons. That's different places, but yeah. All right. We well, go on it. We'll all together. Right? Yeah. Show, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know, said I've, you've I've been thought a lot love. about <laughs> like, like I've daydreamed about going on Survivor a lot. Oh yeah. And, um, it's in the cards. Well, you know, the tough thing about Survivor after I've spoken to people who have been on it is like, if you get far enough, but get voted out, you still have to like stay over there on like Ponderosa mm. for the whole time. Because you need to be at the end, you need to be voting. Like for if the you people. make the merge and stuff like that. How, wait, how long is the whole? I can't remember. How, the whole experience nine is years. a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. 
I think. I was really wrong. Still a lot Originally, oh, it was I, 42 days, but then because of the pandemic, they did. They, they shortened, shortened it, it, and then they kept it short. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I, I guess it's cheaper, probably, to produce. Yeah. They're like, um, we can get away with this. It's kind of like yeah. how um, Gatorade bottles, like, they still look the same, but they actually made the the uh, the <laughs> concave in the bottom bigger so that oh, less, yeah. less product yeah or, or like the air they put more air in the the chip bags oh they God. made the survivor season <laughs> yeah. shorter just to save as a cost saving yeah. measure i think the tough part for me would be um the 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 narrative is out of your hands yeah. big huge. yeah and that's really hard which you know i i empathize a lot with after having hosted a survive mm -hmm. survivalist show yeah um and just and you like you also know how manipulable post-production is like of course you could completely yeah. change the narrative of any of your videos yeah get some tact and i i just yeah having my stuff taken out of context. yeah no it's wild because someone could be like um michelle's kind of kooky and annoying and then they find like a weird clip of you being like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> they and then shit. they're like they're like great like now we've got and then yeah. and then it just kind of like turns into the cycle where yeah. we're like i guess we're just running with this yeah. michelle doesn't know what she's doing exactly. narrative and then she's like whoopsie i tripped over something and it's like classic michelle the producer yeah. leans in is like can you shake your head left and right and go blah, 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 blah. yeah <laughs> we're gonna use that for a hundred dollars will you say <laughs> will you misspell this word or oh mispronounce this word because i know behind camera all like because i've seen the other side i know yeah. all the questions they're asking mm -hmm. they're going to ask you 400 and they'll only use one of them like, right and i get it you have to make a story but there are so many times we hear survivor winners say like that their at their winners edit was so different than their actual experience you know yeah and that kind of that freaks me out a little bit because they're working backwards because they because they the thing about unscripted and you know this is that like you like the the audience wants to watch an arc yes you know what i so mean they have to make one so they have to make one whether or not one's there or not you're creating the marble yeah. marble slab mm -hmm. and they're going okay here's here's david or whatever and you're like what about all that other stuff yeah. and i bet like there are so many times when someone is implementing their strategy really early on but they exclude it. So then they get to the end. And how many times have we seen someone in Survivor and like, they didn't do anything. But then it right. turns out all the other contestants were like, they were running the whole thing the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, a Notions so. 11 flashback. Yeah. Sequence. Yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. And then at the end, they're like, well, actually, during this moment, I was doing yeah, this. Since and they then, started doing flashbacks, yeah. I get so bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, in the interest of time, we should probably close this one out. Um, you know what I realize we don't generally do? What? Plugs. Oh, yeah, we got to do that. Is there anything you want to plug? Is there anything you want oh, to plug? Well, what, please uh, come watch Creator Clash come on April 15th. Come watch Creator 15th. Clash Support, April 15th. Uh, not just us, but also Everybody. many charities. Many charities. Yeah. Um, Are the, we trying to get in the ring? Yes. Yeah, just, 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 just do it like Nico Omolana style. Yeah. Get in that ring. <laughs> please, please let me in. You can also, of course, uh, Michelle's channel will be linked. Um, if there's anything else we should know about uh, you. That's really it. Well, we end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We love we you. We love you. And I'm sorry. Boom! <laughs> uh, a French serial imposter convinced everyone he was a missing Texas teen. <gasps> I am the baby. I am the baby. Baby, I, I love uh, Coco Mick Melon. Mordi. <laughs> a school musical. <laughs> um, <laughs> my name is Little Timmy and you are watching Disney Channel or whatever. Rather peculiar parents. Gucci girl. Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving, girl, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, all you want it. Go to Richmond.